From Lego Star Wars to Lego Marvel, Lego Harry Potter, Lego Batman and many others, the question is, which Lego game has the best first level? Today I will be ranking every single opening level in Lego games from worst to best. Cue the music. So, the first LEGO game on the list at number 26 really doesn't capture the essence of a LEGO game at all. And that LEGO game is LEGO World. To begin with, you are simply thrown onto a pirate island after having the opportunity to customise your character with a whopping very little options to pick from. For me, what makes this opening so bad is the insignificant amount of gameplay there is. Most of the opening consists of you watching mini tutorials. The missions for the characters are very simple too and they do feel rather tedious as there isn't much to them. Now, I do enjoy LEGO Worlds because I like building my own structures, but without a shadow of a doubt, LEGO Worlds definitely has the weakest opening. Hey, Harry! And it sure doesn't look like everything is awesome anymore, as at number 25 we have LEGO Movie, but which one? One or two? Unexpectedly, it is LEGO Movie 1. I do have a lot of nostalgia for this LEGO game, but there is no denying that the opening level is one of the most disappointing LEGO game levels ever. The level is only two minutes long, now hey hey, it's not always about how long it lasts, it's more about the experience. Experience, but in this case, all you simply do within this level is jump over a laser. Then you build a rocket ship and then get blinded, and after completing the prophecy, it just feels like this was the final section of a much larger level, and I really don't like how they used the movie scenes too for the cutscenes. It just feels out of place. And hey, it looks like someone isn't all too happy. Lego Harry Potter years 5 to 7 wing Guardian Leviosa as its way into number 24. This one for me was so unexpected as The Order of the Phoenix is my favourite Harry Potter film so I didn't expect to place it this low. With this being a direct follow up to the first Lego Harry Potter game you are already very well aware of the core gameplay for the Lego Harry Potter games so this level just feels way too simplistic even for an opening level. There really isn't much outside of performing Wingardium Leviosa several times and pulling orange handles. And I do mean it here, no no one ever stacked these bricks correctly, and if you did, the level also has some very filler sections, such as where everyone ends up crashing in a garden after flying around London, then you have to get back Mad-Eye Moody's walking stick. TT really did a great job with the settings here, I love London and the Ministry of Magic, the miserable British park. However, this doesn't account for the very simplistic gameplay, and it does get better throughout the game when you get your spells back. Coming in at number 23, it's time to jump up, kick back, whip around and spin. It's Lego Ninjago, the movie, the video game. Still a mouthful. Overall, I am not a huge fan of this Lego game. I think it would have made more sense for us to have a full-fledged Lego Ninjago game based upon the show. The first level really prioritises teaching the player about the new combat system. You are just simply stuck in this dojo, however. For a opening level, I think it is pretty average. The combat is fun for now, but in the long term it does go stale very quickly throughout the game. And that really annoyed me about the LEGO Ninjago game. A lot of the game is focusing on the combat and it just loses that magical charm that LEGO games have within the level design because there's barely any puzzles. Luckily, I tell you what isn't a puzzle anymore. Have you ever wanted early access to a game or to be able to watch a TV show which isn't available in your country? Well, thanks to Surfshark VPN, you can do so. The other day, I wanted to watch Harry Potter and it wasn't available and then bam, it was thanks to Surfshark VPN. I know, I know, I know, it is truly magic. This is all done via switching your VPN with Surfshark. This can also grant you early access to games too. <clears throat> Not to forget the online protection too, I have to say I have loved Surfshark ever since I joined their incredible service. And oh, if you use this fancy code I just built here, you can get yes 83% off plus 3 months free. I cannot express how grateful I am for Surfshark for offering this to you guys, if you want to learn more about this check out the link below. Thank you Surfshark, anyway back to the list. Well. The worst rated LEGO game surprisingly doesn't get off to the worst start. At number 22 is LEGO Movie, 
2. This LEGO game is completely different as TT Games decided to completely abandon the LEGO game formula they built over the years as they wanted to try something new. Though this may seem harsh, it unfortunately didn't work. The game's entire story can literally be completed in 5 hours, Ace Chemicals from LEGO Batman 2 is nearly an hour alone. We open up in Apocalypseburg and this LEGO game has a new feature which allows you to build wherever you want, which sounds good on paper, but after a while it gets very repetitive as you are constantly throwing down trampolines, sprinklers, thumpers, micromanagers. Don't get me wrong, I do in some sort of way enjoy it and a lot of people vote this as the worst rated LEGO game and I don't think it is the worst. Hello. LEGO Movie 2, as strange as this may sound, doesn't officially have any levels due to it all being in the open world. It doesn't feature the same charm that most other LEGO games offer. I respect TT for trying something different here and it is refreshing to some degree. At number 21, honey, where's my super suit? LEGO Incredibles is up next. Now, 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 LEGO Incredibles does get slated for being a mega easy LEGO game. This may partially be down to constantly playing as either the Incredibles or Frozone. Yeah. Yeah. It has always frustrated me that they decided to start with Incredibles 2 over Incredibles 1, and if they'd started with Incredibles 1, it would be a lot higher on the list, as that level is incredible. Undermined, for the most part, is an enjoyable opening level. I love the beginning where you toss enemies into the giant drill while getting to ride around in a minecart mining away. It is just this level becomes extremely forgettable. Don't get me wrong, I love the co-op aspects here using Dash and Violet to team up alongside getting to throw your family members, but there is nothing that makes me want to go back and replay this level. If, if, if they added the Underminer as a boss, this level would have been much, much better, though it may not be accurate to the film they did this with Bon Voyage, and that was a very creative boss battle. Looking across all the levels in the LEGO Incredibles game, Undermined is by far my least favourite level, and I think it's the worst one, and that's the opening level. Making its way into the top 20, welcome to Jurassic Park. Hey! Oh, and I completely forgot. Hello, hello, hello there, guys. I am Rugged Eagle, and if you are enjoying today's video, make sure to subscribe and go to drop a like. Seriously, thank you all so much for the amazing support. I really love LEGO Jurassic World. It takes a more serious approach in its level design, as most of the game's levels consist of you trying to avoid dinosaurs, and it has a high emphasis on stealth. So why have I placed it at number 20? The raptor enclosure part of this level isn't the best. You simply track a few things and do a very easy mini game. You do have the amazing cutscene at the end, however, with shooter, shooter. <laughs> then there is, give me a drum roll, the fossil dig site. You may be asking what is so exciting about that. Well, I think this part of the level is such a relaxing way to get yourself enthralled into the LEGO game experience. Just in case you didn't know, you can go to find the Back to the Future DeLorean license plate within this level too, which is a nice little easter egg. This LEGO game level doesn't have a single enemy within the entirety of the level, and I think it is a very unique way in starting a LEGO game, and that's why I think it deserves this spot. Time for us to jump into a fridge as we have LEGO Indiana Jones 2 at number 19. LEGO Indiana Jones 2 is a LEGO game not many people like. I can see why. This may be down to every final boss being a gigantic behemoth if I do not know what or how they simply rushed the first three films. I personally enjoy LEGO Indiana Jones 2. I believe it gets off to a strong start. The warehouse has a great atmosphere. I do not like the water bottles. I think this feature didn't work well at all. Half the time you throw a water bottle, and it misses. The tiny parkour segments are fun, but I wish they added more of them to the level, as Indiana Jones swinging from the ceiling lights was one of the main highlights in the opening scene for the Crystal Skull. If they added more parkour into the level, I think it would have been a lot better. This is why, for me, the first game's opening level is so high upon my list. Out of all the levels in LEGO Indiana Jones 2, this is definitely one of the better levels, but it can't compete against all the other 
over opening levels on the list. Oh, this next one is going to shock you. At number 18 is LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga. Now, we cannot forget how this was the pure foundation all other LEGO games were built upon, and that does make this level extremely special. As iconic as this level may be, it isn't the greatest opening level and not even top 10. Now, I'm not going to let nostalgia affect me. It's a great level. I really love it. But from a gameplay standpoint, all you are really doing is slashing down battle droids and doing a few droid terminals. Why I think a lot of people really love this level in particularly is not the gameplay. It's the amazing charm this level has. You have the battle droids having dinner. You can let TC-14 hop around with one leg. You have the dancing chairs. There is tons and tons of rooms to explore and this is what the pure foundation of what we see now as a LEGO game was built upon. To say it is at number 18 and this level was made all the way back in 2005 with LEGO Star Wars the video game, that is impressive most impressive. Making its way into number 17, yes, behold, Kang the Conqueror. Oh yes, it's Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. Being a direct follow-up to the phenomenal Lego game, which is Lego Marvel Super Heroes, Lego Marvel 2 had some big shoes to fill. Unfortunately, the opening level didn't surpass that of Sand Central. The Guardians of the Galaxy are some of my favourite Marvel characters, so I really do enjoy the lines of dialogue shared between the characters. Being able to listen to Mr. Blue Sky as Star-Lord is so fun to do. I just didn't enjoy how the level started. The part where you have to rescue the civilians, you simply complete a puzzle, then the camera decides to zone in on a civilian for ages. Having Kang the Conqueror as your main villain, I just don't think this is the most creative way to kickstart your game. Lego Marvel 2 is one of my top 5 favourite Lego games. But you may be asking, why have I put this above negotiations? Well, the final boss is so good in this level. Ease on the Searcher is very reminiscent of Galactus from the first game. They sure played it safe. The boss battle gets extremely chaotic. Now, I really love the team-up abilities. They were such great fun and effective and added a lot more co-op value to the combat. Exploring the Milano was nice. The section where you need to rescue the civilians really drags this level down a lot. Purely due to ease on, LEGO Marvel 2 deserves this position. That seriously reflects how great of a boss he is, because if it wasn't for him, this would be extremely low on the list. Riding its way into number 16 is the LEGO game that opens up with I'm Walking on Sunshine. Oh yes, it's LEGO City Undercover. In all seriousness though, this LEGO game is severely underrated. However, it does get off to a very slow start, and I mean slow. First off, you have to drive to the police station, fix a computer, get your uniform, hit the gym, attend a briefing, chase down three criminals, fix a gas station, get a grapple gun, drive back to LEGO City, then you can begin level one. The Le the level overall is extremely fast paced, I appreciate this LEGO game for the amount of parkour it features and this level is no exception, I think it really makes City Undercover stand out. I mean, vaulting across rooftops and climbing up pipes is really fun and it keeps it really fast paced. With only building twice within the level, the level is literally completed within 2 minutes and it's just a little bit too fast paced. However, the opening of the game, there is a lot to do in the open world, so that's that does kinda account for it. Okay, you've had enough. Coming in at number 15, it looks like we are off to see the wizard, the wonderful Wizard of Oz, it's Lego Dimensions. From here on, all the opening levels become very good, with a few that are exceptional, more on them later. For me, what I enjoy about this level is how you literally follow the yellow brick road. What elevates Dimensions to be on this spot is seriously the incredible lines of dialogue. You're coming with me, Scarecrow. Sadly, what pulls this level down is the final boss with the Wicked Witch. The game struggles here with not having many options for puzzles, as you currently do not have a keystone, as later on in Dimensions the game really pushes the keystones. <clears throat> this is due to the Toys to Life aspect, as a lot of the characters did cost a lot of money. Do not get me wrong, the entire scope of this level is insane, from exploring the field of flowers to driving up to the Wicked Witch's castle, walking along the yellow brick road. It is just, it feels a little bit more like a 
hub world level rather than a main level because there's no exciting new gameplay here because we do not have a keystone thus far, but I really do enjoy the scope of the level and the scenery, hence why it is at number 50. Oh, now this next one was definitely a tough one. Grappling its way onto number 14 is LEGO Batman 3. This LEGO game is widely known for being a bit of a letdown, the worst of the LEGO DC games, which I do agree with, but it's not a bad LEGO game. Many people may see it this way due to the open world and the level design. The game didn't have many memorable levels, and the giant Superman boss was an attempt to have a boss on the same scale as Galactus, which unfortunately fell flat. But with all this in mind, LEGO Batman 3 does get off to a strong start. The level kind of feels like a LEGO Batman 2 level compared to the rest of LEGO Batman 3, which is a positive. Robin even goes on to mention how they fought the Joker previously in the subway level underground retreat from LEGO Batman 2, which was a nice little callback. This level is exactly what I expect from a LEGO Batman game. You have the detective aspect using Batman's sensor suit, Robin's hazmat suit, and I do have to give it to LEGO Batman 3. I love how they integrated the suits. Running through the broken down trains was awesome. Now, I am aware a few people are not a fan of Robin's hazmat suit. Personally, I love trying to track down the little red and yellow bricks. The level then finishes with the Killer Croc boss battle. Now, I don't know why, but I think this is one of the best LEGO Batman 3 boss battles. This is because TT tried something new here. Instead of just attacking the boss, you need to lure Killer Croc out of the water, which then ends up dropping yellow and red bricks to be sucked up by Robin with his vacuum. Sweeping in at the unlucky number 13 is LEGO Batman 3 minus 2. That was a stupid way of saying LEGO Batman Batman 1 is here. Oh, what can I say? This was my first ever LEGO game level, and it does hold a special place in my heart, but no one can forget that satisfying tightrope sound effect. Ooh. And this was the introduction of the bat suits, which added a lot more variety for ways levels can be completed and was a major step up compared to previous LEGO games. However, however, there is a big issue in this level. When you go to control the RC car with Robin's sometimes you cannot get through this small gap, causing you to end up having to replay the level all over again. The clear face boss fight is okay, you just simply drop a few detonators and hit a few handles with your batarang. It is a little bit outdated, but it has that classic Lego charm. The real selling point of this level comes from the streets of Gotham, and I love how this game keeps it basic and effective. I think this was a big issue with Lego Batman 3. It didn't feel like a Lego Batman game, and I'm happy they changed this with LEGO DC Supervillains, which feels more like a Batman game than LEGO Batman 3. Truth be told, I really struggled with this position, so LEGO Batman 3 and LEGO Batman 1 could go any way around, really. From a galaxy far, far away, coming in at number 12 is LEGO Star Wars the Force Awakens. Looking back, this LEGO game hasn't aged all too well due to the release of LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, and it did have its fair share of filler levels. <clears throat> there is literally a level on which you are trying to open your own front door. Oh. Fortunately, the opening gets off to a great start, and is seriously the best level in the game, and no, 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 I am not hating on the sequels, it seriously just is the best. To begin with, the end of segment is really good fun. I love commanding my own army of little Ewoks, riding the ATST across a huge battle was great too. Out of the three LEGO Star Wars games, I definitely think this has the best iteration of the Battle of Endor. Then there is the boss fight with Palpatine, and in all honesty, it was quite boring. There's no real interaction between you and the boss, you just end up keep using the force all the time, and it just lacks that interaction. Not only this, half the time you are watching a mini cutscene, and not to forget button mashing, which played a prominent role in this LEGO game, and it really didn't do it any justice, unlike the Skywalker Saga, which had a perfect balance. The Millennium Falcon flight section was so good, the controls were amazing and I love this style of gameplay. If it wasn't for the average boss fight with Palpatine, this level would have been a lot higher. 
from far over the Misty Mountains at number 11 is Lego Hobbit. This Lego game truly is long forgotten. Golden is extremely underrated, but they did forget to complete the game as they didn't add the last movie, even though they said they would. The level brought back the small building minigame which made its first appearance in Lego Movie 1, alongside introducing a new crafting system and mining system. This level has a lot going on, from exploring Erebor, which may I say looks incredible, to crafting a key mining for the Arkenstone, then defending the castle against the Dragon Smaug, then trying to escape the Dragon Smaug. Really, Lego Hobbit has a lot going on in its opening level, and in terms of an introductory level, it does a great job. So, coming in at number 10, give us the Avengers theme, or oh, yes, it's Lego Marvel Avengers. Now, generally seen as the weakest of the Lego Marvel games, there is no denying Avengers wasn't on point with the characters, and this is exactly why it deserves this position. The level really utilises the characters, and most importantly, co-op play being the first LEGO game to introduce team-up abilities, and I love the team-up abilities. I mean, they should have been in the Skywalker saga. They were so fun to do. They were amazing. I love the team-up abilities. I love them. From playing as Hawkeye and Black Widow to Hulk and Iron Man, Captain America 4, this level really impressed me with the amount of ways you can come around a particular situation. For example, here you could detonate the trip mines or simply attack the enemies or jump in the turret and mow them down. There is even this arcade style minigame to the level which isn't brand new as it did make an appearance in Lego Batman 3 but I somewhat enjoy it. But being brutally honest I wasn't expecting to place Lego Marvel Avengers this high on the list because overall I think the levels are pretty forgettable in Lego Marvel Avengers and this one definitely surprised me. At number 9, we have LEGO Star Wars, ooh, the Skywalker Saga. Now, this one was very, very tricky due to the game allowing the player to start on whichever trilogy they want to. It kind of has three different opening levels. But in terms of the true opening level, the game actually does recommend that you start with a new home. Just as a heads up, if it was a bigger fish, this would be at the very bottom of the list, and in terms of the sequels with First Order of Business, I would probably place that around top 50. A bigger fish was a, a pretty bad level. Now, I am so glad that we start with a new hope, because it is the perfect blend of old and new. The refreshing change to the combat system felt great, and I love how they integrated Rogue One into the level. I am a massive fan of the different routes you can take to resolve a certain situation, building a little mini Death Star to mow your way through a bunch of stormtroopers. Oh, and how can you forget the interior being fully made out of Lego, which really defeats finds the LEGO touch on this game, and I think more LEGO games need to feature this from here on, with more interiors being made out of LEGO. Looking over the game's entire level design, the original trilogy had the strongest of the lot, with Return of the Jedi being my favourite, even though I have only seen this Star Wars movie once. It is now time to master the Rohirrim, charging into number 8 is LEGO Lord of the Rings. LEGO Lord of the Rings begins off in the Second Age and it throws you straight into one of the largest battles in Middle-earth. I mean, what a way to kickstart your game. Then you have Bionicle-looking Sauron and this boss in a small way kind of reminds me of the Dark Soul bosses. I mean, you are just endlessly rolling around Sauron waiting for him to attack. The section on which you play as Isildur and Elrond climbing Mount Doom, it's just as great as the battle. The tension here is at an all-time high, and I love dodging the lava pores and parkouring my way across the lava. This level doesn't stop at all, and it is constantly keeping the player moving while also doing its job at teaching you the basics. This is exactly what you want with an opening level, a huge, gigantic battle alongside great platforming. Now, coming in at number 7, is one of the best LEGO games, and that is LEGO DC Super Villains. I said the Joker was a one man. Oh, now that menu music. Oh, it just gets you straight into the mood. The game starts with one of the greatest characteristics of a LEGO game, building your own character. In this game's case, he is more than just a custom character, as he plays a huge role in the story. This has to be one of the sole reasons why LEGO DC Super Villains needs to be this high on the list. I really love what they did with the 
custom character. Escaping Strikers Island was a fun little section, but the main standout for me in this level is Joker and Harley Quinn climbing the watchtower. Mark Hamill voicing the Joker was P. This is a really fun section. I love battling all the cops on the watchtower and I love seeing all the Justice League fighting other villains. They even brought back commanding your own henchmen, which works similarly to that of LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens with the Ewoks. The best opening level of all four LEGO Star Wars games is LEGO Star Wars 3 at number 6. This level is so nostalgic to me and it has a very unique take upon an opening level as you do not build once. After using the toggle feature to rescue Padme, Anakin and Obi-Wan, you are then greeted with absolute chaos and it is amazing from riding Reek around the arena, smashing battle droids, fighting the Ackley, then Jango Fett. This is one of the most insane LEGO game levels ever. It's just all out chaos. This is an introductory level by the way and it even features Jedi Bob. There is just too much fun to be had here. I often found myself when I was younger constantly revisiting this level to test out my favourite characters. That shows how great of a level this is. And please comment down below which is your favourite opening level. And if anyone says a bigger fish, mm, we're going to have some problems. Into the top five, we have a very surprising entry with Lego Harry Potter years one to four. This level is not chaotic nor challenging, but it has a very mesmerising charm to it. The level is so relaxing, from the dancing chairs in the leaky cauldron to the opening of the Lego brick wall greeting the player to the remarkable Diagon Alley, TT Games perfectly captured the essence of the wizarding world. There is just so much charm here, from rolling around endlessly as Harry Potter to entering the shops inside of Diagon Alley. I can't express how much I love, love, love love this level, even sweeping the floor felt magical. And I don't know if it is my love for the Harry Potter films, especially the first few, they just have that magical charm to it, and this Lego game perfectly captures that and always makes me want to go back and re-watch the films. Now, at number 4 has to be one of the best opening levels I have ever seen, it's Lego Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh my, does this level have it all, it has the charm, the action, the humour, fish, new gameplay mechanics. From the very beginning, feeding the donkey and fixing the workshop to battling Jack Sparrow, and I like how they integrated platforming into this boss battle when you jump from plank to plank. When you get inside of the prison, if you are playing co-op, your mate is literally just stuck inside of the prison cell, mate, you're staying there forever. <laughs> Escaping Port Royale is everything you thought LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean would have been, from rolling around on a barrel to then using the barrel to head underwater. This is one of my favourite LEGO game levels of all time. As we have moved into the top 5, there is seriously not a single negative in any of these levels, they are all so great in their own distinct ways. But the oldest LEGO game to make it into the top 3 is LEGO Indiana Jones, the original edition. Adventures. This level all around is the peak Indiana Jones experience, from running away from the giant boulder which in some ways can be quite challenging, I remember failing this a few times when I was younger. I seriously must have played this level around a hundred times and I am still not bored of it. The platforming is at an all time high, swinging from vines and exploring the lost temple, I love all the traps dotted around the jungle and it works extremely well as an introductory level with some of the best set pieces from the broken bridge to the poison darts passage. If you are into speedrunning too, this level is the definition of LEGO yeah. speedrunning. It also is one of the greatest LEGO game levels in terms of co-op play. I really like how you have to work together to get through the level, even to the little part where you have to use a raft to sail across an alligator infested pond. Also, just in case you didn't know, if you actually fail the boulder segment three times, you get this exclusive cut See. Oh, now this was such a tough decision. Really, the top three could go any way around, but at number two, I've given it to Lego Batman 2. A lot of twos. The opening for Lego Batman 2 is so, so iconic as it was the first ever Lego game to introduce 
voice lines. The setting of the fate with all the villains placed throughout was a great decision. I love how you get to progressively make your way through different areas, fighting all sorts of different villains. TT Games really did something clever here, as all of the bosses in the level actually teach the player the basics of the game. You have Harley Quinn, who teaches you how to use the Batarang Riddler with the grapple gun and sensor suit, Two-Face with Robin's acrobatic suit, and Joker with a bit of a mix of all of them. In my eyes, this was a genius way to begin a LEGO Batman game. It introduces you to all of the villains defining the world of Gotham. There is not a single negative I can give yet again. It's perfect. Then the level after gets even better, and seriously, if they combined the second level with this level, it would be number one on the list. So what exactly is at number one? Well, I'm sure you all pretty much know what it is. It's LEGO Marvel Superheroes. I played this game for so long as a kid, and it isn't just nostalgia. Sand Central is the peak LEGO game experience. Hulk smashing cars, swinging around as Spider-Man, listening to Agent Coulson telling you useless information as you obliterate wave upon wave of enemies. The gigantic Sandman boss is hilarious, giving subtle references to the Wizard of Oz. Then you go to battle a literal sand castle, and who remembers how Sandman turns himself into this stupid looking thing? <laughs> you know what? Which is actually better, Sandman as a sand castle or Mr. Fantastic as a teacup? Let me know. I am going with Mr. Fantastic. I am a teacup.